Now, the latest retail numbers show that sales are rising less than forecast and that consumer confidence continues to hover near an eight-month low. In spite of all this, though, certain companies, such as Apple, continue to get people to line up for their products. Here to tell us more about marketing and branding trends, as well as what's happening in retail sales, we have an expert, Scott Galloway, clinical associate professor of marketing at NYU Stern School of Business. And Scott Galloway is also the founder of L2 Think Tank that focuses on digital innovation. Scott, good to have you with us on Thanks, Bloomberg Frank. once again. This whole idea that people who are strapped for money would go out and line up for an iPhone, that really says a lot about the way people view themselves and also what's going to happen in the retail world. Yeah, I think people have decided or there's a general trend that's playing out and the beneficiaries are companies like Apple that the products they can't afford, they want the best. So you have a lot of people that even if they don't have big incomes, look at teenagers. Uh, you know, they don't have the money to buy a car. They may not even have the money these days to pay for a private tuition or get even, they'll bypass some basic essentials to buy a two or $300 pair of shoes and to make sure that they have the right phone. So what category- You can just hear those conversations between teenager and parent at home. Absolutely, yeah. So it's, I think people have decided that they either want the best or they want extreme value and everything in the middle is getting crushed. I think the word that you were using in one of your recent notes is bifurcation. That's almost all like an SAT word, but it's really a tale of extremes, low end and high end. Yeah, I think it's probably, it's one of the most dominant trends in business as a whole, and that is there are so many choices now from a consumer standpoint because there's so many entrepreneurs and such availability of capital despite all the recent headlines. You and I could start a vodka brand, we could lease airplanes and potentially start an airline. 20 years, we just couldn't do that. All right, let's do that now. Let's, let's do that. That's fine. That sounds like a lot or, of fun. Or an airline that serves vodka, right? So. But the point is, consumers are so over-messaged with brands that they process information in the most efficient way possible, and that's the binary method, a zero or a one. So people get Walmart, they get Apple, they get Tiffany, JCPenney, Sears in the middle, department stores trading off both value and brands. That's too much work. People are going to the polls. So you see in politics, people are either going to the left or the far right. We have a nation that's becoming from a a psychological standpoint, a nation of Puritans or pornographers. Look at airlines. JetBlue Southwest doing well. Emirates, Singapore Airlines. The guys in the middle, the Deltas, the JetBlues of the Americans, having a tough time. So this idea that everyone thinks in zeros and ones, it's almost as if human beings are imitating the way digital technology works. Well, when you think about, as long as uh, code has been around, right, all the advances in technology, still the most efficient way to program everything comes down to a zero and a one. So this, this notion of a, a, this kind of this binary decision mechanism, it really is, it's, it feels like it's almost part of our DNA now. So it's almost as if something is on or something's off. Luxury brands, how are they doing when it comes to things like Chanel handbags and Mercedes? Are they actually racking up the sales? They're doing well. You know, 2009 was a tough year, but luxury roars back. And every time the luxury has a tough time, people start, you know, it's the, what is the Mark Twain uh, saying that the, the rumors of their death have been greatly, greatly exaggerated, exaggerated cetera, right? Yeah. Luxury's actually done really well, and it's come back. Mercedes at the high end, BMW, Audi doing really well, Chanel, Gucci, Prada, those brands are, are doing exceptionally well. And, you know, these, these brands speak to us on a very fundamental, instinctive level. It, it, for thousands of years, we've been taught that these beautiful, ornate items make us feel more godlike, right? That, that's not going anywhere. We, all of us are moved occasionally when we see something extraordinarily beautiful, and luxury gives us a chance to grasp at that. And at the same time, luxury gives us the chance to be in a very primitive way, you know, the kind of the most basic instinct to be more attractive to the other sex. When you're driving a Porsche, you're sending a signal to people, right? When you're wearing a pair of Manolo Blahniks, you're sending a signal to people. These are instincts that are millions of years old, and luxury taps into those. Now, you tapped into a new mobile device, didn't you? You changed your mobile phone. Why'd you do that? Well, it goes back to this whole notion of, of, of brand self-expressive benefit. There's what a product does for you, and then there's, there's what a brand says about you. When you drive up in a certain car, when you wear a certain suit, when you work for a certain organization, it, it implicitly says something or explicitly says something about you. And phones have become uh, a great sort of indicator, uh, uh, a self-expressive brand. So when you have a when you have a uh, a, uh, a BlackBerry, it probably it says it says you, you have a job. That's which is 
is a nice thing. When you when you have something from Apple, it says that you're elegant and design friendly. All right. I want to thank you very much. Always friendly. Always insightful about design and branding. Thank you very much, Scott Galloway.